Okay, welcome back. This is going to be um, the second league that we played today. We played the first league with uh, Amulet with Sakama. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun for sure. Uh, and right now we're going to be playing a Green-White Titan Field. Um, this is a list uh, that um, X-Whale, uh, Will Krigger, uh, won uh, an, an event. Uh, it's basically like a, a, an SCG kind of uh, circuit. Uh, that's called uh, NRG, and he won the event with this list, which is pretty sweet. Uh, this is not the first time that I stream Green White Titan Field, but since the printing of Triad, now we're no longer a Knight of the Reliquary deck like uh, like we were playing in the past, uh, but we're actually just straight up valakuting people because that's the the cool thing to be doing right now. <clears throat> So, yeah, so basically it's very similar to what we were doing earlier, except that now we have two Valak in our deck and four Dryads, uh, which makes, of course, things a little bit more explosive and it gives us different angle of attack. Uh, but the core of the shell is, is the same. We have some ramp spells. Oh, let me split them up right here. So we have four Search for Tomorrow and two Gracers to play on turn one. Then we have uh, Steve in Rampant Growth. This one definitely surprised me. I have not seen Rampant Growth in probably years. So it's cool that I totally forgot that it was Modern Legal, even though it was in Modern Horizons multiple times and it was reprinted multiple times as well. But I totally forgot this card was legal. And this is, of course, the, the correct art. Um, I wouldn't take any other art. And we have a couple of Explorers. And then one Tracker for Dryads and four Prime Times. Um, we're going to see how, how this list plays out. Uh, one thing that I'm a little bit worried, maybe uh, incorrectly so, is the fact that we only have uh, six fetchables, yet we have a shit ton of ways of fetching for basics that only fetch for basics, like this, 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 and this. So I wonder if that's ever going to become an issue. Um, I guess we're going to see, you know, once once we start playing some games and see how we'll get a feel for the deck. Uh, but yeah, I mean, nothing nothing too crazy, really. Um, we have already been playing lists like this in the past, so um, it shouldn't surprise anybody. Uh, the good thing, and um, what I really rescue from this list and why I think it's great, it's because of the sideboard. Um, I've been saying how uh, right now, uh, probably like the single best sideboard card for Amulet in Primeval Titan decks is Celestial Purge, and this deck uh, is able to play this uh, multiple copies of this card because it, it's just really easy for us to cast it. Uh, because of, you know, all the basics that we get to play and stuff. Um, but Purge answers Moon, it answers Sashiok, it answers Death Shadows and Lilianas and stuff like that. So it, it's very, very cool. Uh, and it, it just basically covers all of our bases. Uh, we also have access to Rest in Peace because we're not playing Knight of the Reliquary anymore. So having access to cards like Rest in Peace makes uh, certain matchups uh, a little bit more winnable, uh, being stuff like Storm and whatnot. So uh, it's nice to have access to Rip. I even Mind Sensor for the Mirror Match. And it also has, I literally just said Storm. It has like a, a bunch of like random uses as well that you can that you can go with. Um, you can mess people up with even Mind Sensor, which is pretty cool. A um, bunch of Path to Exiles, a couple of trackers for grindier matchups, uh, one Rex Age, and a couple of Veil of Summers. So, a uh, big, big fan of this list. Uh, the only thing that has me slightly worried would be like the Mono Red matchup. So, yeah, I would like to, to get a feel for the list before I make any changes, but it feels like um, in the list that I have played in the past with this, uh, with decks like this, um, Knight of Autumn uh, would come in pretty clutch in those kind of uh, matchups. So we're gonna see how it how it works out here. Again, I, I whenever I see a list, I like to you know not make any changes until I played at least a league, and then take it from there. So yeah, let's do just that. Play on field, green, white. Let's play a match. I don't like the Dimmer Wars the deck, it kind of sucks. Ah, hi! No me gusta el mazo de Dimmer Wars, I get Nice. Good translation. Uh, yeah, I think it's actually quite good, but that's that's just me. Um, I think it's really hard to play. No Rage games outside of Chicago running great events in the Midwest. 
Yeah, they unfortunately they don't they don't come all the way all the way to the to the west coast. That would be very cool, but it's just not the case. Did I see the Wargate list at 5.0 a second ago? No, I did not. No, I did not. Um, I'll check it out later for sure. Or if you have a link, just just shoot it up. Well, only lost game two of the finals, only loss of the day versus Hilliard. Nice, that's insane. Yeah, that's a very good record. Yeah, the, the deck seems very good to me. Our opponents are scared. Rip of winning on the mid Ursa then. Yeah, uh, Rip Rip could be solid against Ursa. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, I don't think it's like insane or anything, but it's 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 pretty solid. Uh, yeah, this looks like a great hand, right? Ojo, tojale con esta lista. Tal cual. Um, so turn one, I think I'm gonna suspend search. Yeah, I think it's still better to suspend search than to and to cast the Gracer here. And it's pretty cute that you get to suspend search, but it doesn't actually cast the card, so you can still once upon a time because I have not cast the card yet. It's a cute interaction. Uh, we might get be getting paired against Storm. No, blue white control. It just guy control. Sorry. All right, now we are actually going to cast the spell, so I'm going to cast once upon a time for free. Field of the Dead. I'm actually going to get Castle because it allows me to play an earlier Titan. So if my button just basically cannot tap out anymore. Play Valakit, play Temple Garden, pass the turn. So if my opponent taps out, we have a turn three Titan. Should be pretty good for us. Hmm. Missing land drops, A. Eh? Mm. They would just jam this into a mana leak and we don't we don't care too much about it. But it's nice that we play around logic not beautifully here. Alright, so they do it they did have the mana leak. Cavern would be a great draw. Get a planes here and pass a turn. If you had activated cast, could you have played Faith Mana Leak? No, you can only use that mana to cast a spell, so you can't use it to pay for Mana Leak. That's why I didn't. Canopy. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we actually can pay for mana leak. So I say let's do it. I'm tapping pretty poorly, but it doesn't matter. Like they add a, they add a color in this or they don't. Logic knot. Oh, Archmage's charm. That's kind of annoying. On the other hand, if we hadn't done that, then my opponent would have been able to draw two, which is basically as problematic for us. Yeah, this is not looking good. I'm actually going to hold on to this rampant growth. It can represent more... Um, it can represent uh, Field of Dead tokens. It can represent Valaka triggers, hopefully. Oops. Astrolabe? Sure. Because it's just like a free card. Mm. 
So I'm assuming that my opponent does not play a Mystic Sentry in their deck, right? Considering the fact that they have six lands in play and they still don't have three islands. And again, holding on to the lands because of Tireless Tracker, because of multiple reasons. Yeah, we're falling behind very, very quickly here. I was considering, uh, I stopped there for a second in, the response, in response to the Archmage's Charm because I could have packed it for a Titan, just so I have a Titan in hand. Uh, but we might get uh, wrecked pretty hard by something like Vendillion Click. Field of Ruin. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I just guess that my, my concerns about like the lack of basics it compared to like the ways of getting it like we're we're done right like we we just have all the basics out of our deck in, in our in our current situation right here in fact now one of this one of all of these cards is dead now and they're gonna get free value from field of ruin so yeah so very first match that we play and my 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 number one concern already just showed up My initial concern about the list already just rearing its ugly head. Don't think there's much to do here, unfortunately, for us. Here I'm gonna do like, oh no, I have sixth when they kill my Steve. Oh, they just went face. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to win this one. And here I'm taking the trade with Steve. How did Sakama do? Had to step away. Uh, I mean, I didn't cast it much. It was in my deck, though. <laughs> so I'm trying to get to a point where I can do multiple things in the same turn. It, it's pretty unlikely, it, uh, pretty unlucky that I were I have not been able to draw a cavern or any of my fields while they are playing Mystic Sanctuary. Wow. And they bring back Bolt instead of Lightning Helix. That doesn't make sense to me. So come eighty percent confirmed. Yeah. Oh, that's actually lethal. Okay. All right. Um. Veil of Summer, Tireless Tracker. And I think I'm going to bring in Purges. I don't think... I think Rest in Peace is a little bit too much. Like, I'm okay with the Bajuggy Bog, but I think Rest in Peace is just a little bit too much. I don't think I want Mind Sensor. Gracer also seems lackluster. Ashiok, yes, I know. That's why I'm bringing in Celestial Purges.
rapid growth so strong. Yeah, so I'm I'm taking out some of the cards that um, that fetch for basics against the deck that has probably four path to exiles and two on two to four uh, field of ruin. Because like I mean the the, the deck the, the game is gonna get to that point right. It literally just happened, where I had, like, I, I just could not get enough value from my, from my ramp spells. Feels that to be bringing in Celestial Purge exclusively for Ashiok, but it's... It's that good. <laughs> it's just that good against us. Uh, we can probably take out a Valakut, actually. Oh, no, we're not playing Vesuva. That's right. So I guess no. Yeah, I just boarded in more threats, but like I actually want to have threats. Like My opponent's going to be answering all my threats. So I think I'm just going to be bringing the one purge. And see how it goes. Mm. Sure. So we're going to be playing Steve on two, crack, then trucker plus fetch. Wow, point at most of five. Brutal. I'm going to once upon on turn one, and the reason for this is because I might find I need to be tap land like a field or a valakut that I want to pick, and if that's the case, then I'm going to be one. I'm going to want to play it on turn one. I set out my gracers so I can't. Oh, second tracker, it's cool. Uh, I set out my gracers so I can't really um, find that. But that's why ancestral. Okay. Interesting. I have not seen an ancestral vision in a really, really, really long time. We're running this into Mana League, which is not great, but hey oh. But it worked. And my opponent didn't kill the tracker either. All right, so I'm liking, I'm liking my spot a fair amount. And here I'm gonna fetch end step, and it's gonna be like, oh no, I fetched, and I exposed my tracker to getting bolted or whatever. Uh, but in reality, that's exactly what I want my opponent to do, especially if they have electrolyze. You see. Next level. Um, so they didn't have Mana Leak last turn. So they, they should have had exactly one turn to draw a Mana Leak, so I think I'm going to go for it. Feels bad, man. I guess I should have played my tracker. <laughs> Whoopsies. I should not play my land there. That was actually a mistake. Is this second? Oh no, this is not the second at least. Ashiok. Cool. Tracker. Land. Try it. Something's not right here, opponent. <laughs> Something's just 
<laughs> Something's just not working out over there in your mana base. There's just... I don't know, man. Why not use the land and crack a clue? Because we have this in play. Sure. Okay, weird sequencing. Uh, I think I actually... Uh, yeah, I guess I do get the land. Shoot down to three. In the end, Sakama is OP. No, Sakama is unplayable. <laughs> yeah, my opponent is very greedy. Very, very greedy. Okay. Also attacking there. Yeah. We have two dead cards in hand. Because we just don't really have targets for them. Like we we're just out of basics. Colossal Dreadmo, exactly. I think I'm just gonna, gonna spend this turn to to take up Blast Zone. One, two, three, four. I can take it up to five to clear the Teferi if I want to. Which I think I'm actually going to do here. So you can probably still beat the Ashiok. But the Teferi is what's winning the game. Yeah, my opponent multi five in this game. But this actually just bought them so much time, it's crazy. More dead cards. So they probably have a path here. Where there? <laughs> Interesting. Um, sure. <laughs> Take the chance to use my windsail heat for something.
cryptic bounce. It sucks, but now at least hopefully I can resolve a prime time. I mean, if my opponent does not have a path, I have a shot at something. Oof. Yeah. First, it's going to come down again. My opponent has success to counter magic. Yeah, it's, it's slipping away from us. Slipping away for sure. Slipping away very, very quickly. One, two, three, four. <laughs> they can even minus the fairy if they care about the titan. But Snapcaster is just brutal for us. Um... My opponent is playing an interesting list. If you can minus here, brutal. Okay, so they're digging for an answer. Yeah, at this point, I don't think we can win anymore. This Ashok was just insane for my opponent. I wonder if there was anything that I could have done with those tireless trackers in order to just get a little bit more value or... We're done here. Yeah, this matchup looks horrendous for us. I I never felt like I was in the game. Neither neither game, honestly. Alright. Okay. Playing the tracker when you play Titan my FW. Yeah, I guess I, I run into that disdainful stroke. I was playing around Mana Leak, but I was not playing around Stroke, and maybe that was what I could have changed. Still not sold that it would have helped me actually win the match, but... Playing against Stretch. <laughs> Second once upon a time. That's prime time. Let's go with Explore here. Play Valakut. And we have a Titan next turn. And we're probably playing against Stretch, so that should probably be the game. Shrikhorn. Okay. This is a mistake, opponents. Why the hell are you doing that? Just couldn't couldn't resist the F6 value. Could not resist the F6 value. Much up feels pretty easy. Yep. My opponent can do whatever the hell they want. They're not going to be able to beat this. Nothing that they do really matters here. Yeah. 
even if they dredge into the nuts, I still think that's not enough. Imp thug loan. So we're gonna start with once upon a time, see what we find. Because if we find the dryad, that's game over. Um another Titan. Sure. <laughs> sure. Let's like let's make sure that my opponent is like deader than dead. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, cool. Um Definitely want these. Definitely want these. Uh, I don't want Path. I might want Veils. Yeah, so we want we want these four cards. We might want these, but I think that with these four we're gonna be enough. We're gonna be we're gonna be good enough. Honestly. Yeah, I don't think it matters too much. This matchup seems very, very good for us. Um, <laughs> on the draw, I don't think I want to take out any of my ramp. Sideboarding is pretty rough with this deck. That I'm going to say. Solo con los dos. Sí, 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 por eso, Rulo. Por eso me parece que no vale la pena. I don't know. I am. I'm just bullshitting here. <clears throat> Haggle for a loan. Okay. Um, well, it seems pretty important for us to rip on two. So I'm going to lead on Valakut, which really sucks. Having drawn both of our Valakuts, it's, it's pretty brutal here. How do I find Etron to be a Vi? It's just. I mean, it's mostly the, the fact that 6-6 six, six is bigger than Stomping Ground. Uh, a 6-6 six, six is bigger than what uh, what Etron is doing. Probably I'm going to have to take some damages here. Oh, we might get got by Magus. Oh, that was a punt. Okay, this. <laughs> Never mind, we're fine. <laughs> we're okay, we're okay. Um, hmm. I could have paid two more life in order to suspend search this turn, but my opponent did not play the Magus that turn, which makes me think they don't have it. And I think that we're going to be fine here. I think that the blocker is more important to make sure that their life total remains high. This resty piece is probably going to just win the game by itself, though. Yep. Indeed. Um, I 
Next turn, we just win. I could have fetched for um, I could have fetched for a uh, basic planes there. Hold up, celestial purge. Maybe that was better. I mean, honestly, I don't think that nothing we do at this point just matters. We have two titans in hand, which my opponent can't beat. And yeah, they're hard casting creepy chills. Sure. I'm gonna get Radium Fountain and other land that's not a Radium Fountain. Plus. <laughs> Stuck on two, yeah. It happens. 30 lands and you get stuck on two lands or three lands or something. It's rough. Where's the amulet? We literally just stream an entire league of amulets. Where were you? Is the real question, Adir F. Where were you when we were streaming amulets? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How the tables have turned. Smoking some pot. Fair. Fair. Uh, yeah, sure. We're going to keep this. Playing against Nicerk. Nicerk. Ugh. There's no way Botanical Sanctum is ever good for us. That's a whiff ski. They went bottom top too, so we're probably dead here. Probably nothing that we're doing matters. Can you imagine if we get to Mind Sensor? My knee around opponent. How much gas would that be? I'm so happy we have a neo a neoform command. Two cards on top. Yes, we're hundred percent dead next turn. Well, we tried, I guess. Yes, attacking with Grazer for value. I guess we don't want to have six. We want to yield on the next step. We seem to be dead here, folks. My opponent is going to go ahead and take some game actions. Then we're going to die. Uh, this is actually um, a pretty uh, a, a pretty good model grinder. So I'm gonna just assume that they know how to kill me from here. They they couldn't fit, so they just drew fifteen. They just gained fifteen. Sorry. Um, mind sensors. Technically, path to exile is interaction. It's not great interaction, but I honestly don't think the Dryads are doing anything for me. Like, we're not going to get there. I get this is not going to matter. It's possible this is just wrong. I'm totally going to lose this game with three Path to Exiles in my hand, right? That's, that's just what's bound to happen here. Okay.
What does path do? It is it makes it a little bit more likely that they will fizzle. Because you force them to go and respond to go off in response to the path. And I'm basically never ever again tapping out. Same thing with celestial perch. I mean it's not great, but like what am I gonna do? Like <laughs> It's not like I have better options. So they're going to get to draw. Gonna get to draw a bunch of cards. But you see now they kinda have to go off with only one draw instead of two. They drew no riders, because otherwise they would have played them. But probably they did draw a Grisser Brand. They didn't draw the other Grisser Brand. It's just not likely. Are we dead? Game 15. So that we did with the amulet deck, uh, we went um, four and one somehow. Well, we can cast a Titan anyway, so it's, yeah. Uh, I should have thought about this a little bit more because now I can't hold a path. I think I'm just going to pass. It delays my Titan one more turn, which sucks, obviously, but... So that was definitely a big punt, not cracking the Steve. Man, that sucks. Snow colored forest. Huh, they conceded. I wonder why they conceded there. Anyway, uh, I mean, we, we saw, we saw like why I'm playing so this year Persian paths, right? Sanchez Court 47, thank you for all your work and dedication. Thank you, Sanchez, for the support. I appreciate it. Welcome back to the Primetime Stronghold. And yep, thank you. Thanks a lot. Path him before they get a chance to cast Neoform. Uh yeah. Yeah, that was an option. That was an option for sure. Yeah, you're right, Christian. I should I should have done that. I mean, my thought was that if they play the Alessaros, right, they, they drew 14 and they discarded some number of Neoforms, right? So they probably have another Neoform in hand. So my thing was, Pathing Right is the only way it does anything? No. Like, we literally just won the game because my opponent fizzled because I purged in response to their Greaser Brand draw 7. So... Path in response to the Grisser Brand draw seven is 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 the line that I'm going for. Uh, 
it's not a great line. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's a good line. <laughs> I'm just saying that it's a line that I have available to me. He can do it in some speed, right? Yeah, but they they only have one draw step to find the stuff that they want. That yeah, so they have like one draw step where they need to find like the shoal and all the other stuff. Exactly. You're just hoping that they don't find the show in the first seven cards. Again, it's not great. <laughs> it's not a great plan, but it's what we have available to us. It's not very good. And sometimes what happens is like your opponents with the draw seven of Grisseran, they will draw the second Grisseran and that deck only plays two Grisserans. Wait, where are we cutting both Falakets? Because we're cutting all the Dryads. The Dino? Yeah. We did play the Dino. <laughs> we did play the Dino. And I love the fact that everybody knows, everybody knows when I say that I know what I mean. Yeah, it was, it was a donation list. I mean, yeah, we have interaction. I mean, this is, this terrible hand is basically the nut draw for us <laughs> because it's what we can do. This is the stuff that we can do. We cross our fingers and we hope it's good enough. Keep sort of my mind sensor. See, see, I really want to get him. I really, really want to get him. Just turn three mind sensor. Go. All right, so the real chancellor, they went down to six. Are we dead? Coming down to live for family vacation Sunday. Hope it's warm. It is warm. All right. So my opponent's back team. So they're going for it. And we either die on turn one after they do a lot of things or we don't. And they die to their upkeep pact. Lattice is unfun. Yeah. I mean, this is great content, right? Like my opponent, I, I keep a hand on the draw with two pieces of interaction and then I just die before I take a turn. What could be, what could be more fun than just staring at your opponent while they go off, hoping that they whiff, but not being able to do anything at all about it? What could be more fun? Wait, what? Oh, they didn't pick the Chancellor because they're, this is a draw seven. That makes sense. I'm like, why would they not pitch the Chancellor to the Allosaurus Rider, but yeah. Lattice wasn't, oh, that Lattice wasn't fun. I mean, it's just, it's a matter of play patterns, right? I've talked about this multiple times on stream, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rant again about why I think that the lattice ban didn't make as much sense. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> my opponent moved to six. I kept a hand with turn one interaction. I kept a hand with turn one interaction, and then I died before I ever got to take a turn. 
so this is this is why it feels so bad, right? Like I just feel like I, I was robbed. Like I just lost a match and there was nothing I could have done about it. Like I literally kept my turn one interaction. And it just didn't matter because my opponent killed me on turn on turn uh, one on their turn one while being on the play. So lattice doesn't you cannot get nutted, right? With a lattice, you're gonna get to like play cards and do stuff, right? At least you show up on stream, Magus, and I'm dying on turn one to Neobrand. Coincidence? I don't think so. Also, Poggers enabled. I can only enable so many Twitch TV emotes, and I, I put a premium on this one. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, I guess we have to update our record because we lost the before taking a turn. Cool, cool, cool. The good thing is at least we got to sit down and like stare at our opponent while they were killing us, hoping that they whiffed. So it really blows my mind, honestly. It really blows my mind. That that deck is, is still legal. Yep, I would imagine this is a keep. We can search on one once upon. Boy, yeah, who are near breath? Please don't, Sam. Please don't. You gotta be part of the solution, not the problem. Opponent turn one mountain go. What the fuck? It's not a bad draw, not a bad draw. Okay, so we need to find ramp here. Well, that's a Wivski. We have our basics covered. So I guess some, what do I get here? Blast Zone? I think I'm gonna get Radiant Fountain actually. Magus, final nib. <laughs> The Milady emote is so good. I love it so much. Oh, sure. Rubble, rubble, rubble. We we have a Neoform command in this in this channel. Let's step. <clears throat> Oh, we also have a Tron command. This channel is ready. We're not messing around in this channel. We got all the commands. <laughs> Top quality commands. Indeed, indeed. I fi both with Tron. Yeah. That is, that is your problem, Sam. That is your problem. All right, Steve. Yeah, sure. Forest. Play Steve. Play Temple Tapped. Say go. Oh, I made a mistake. I should have played Castle there. E, that was a bad mistake. I should have played Castle. Hasoret the Fervent. Hmm. 
Illusion of Neoformis is growing too large. I cannot control all my sleeper agents. <laughs> you have too much power. You have too much power, John. I like playing Sectory. No, the correct play was to play Castle. Because if I play Castle, next turn I can... With I with the, the Steve fetch, I can already cast Titan. And then I get one extra uh, zombie token for my trouble for my troubles. All right, so we're gonna block Hasorat. Though I guess it doesn't matter too much anyway, because I can get double. I can get double field actually. So I guess it it's not terrible. We Who, who makes tokens, opponent? Do you make tokens or I make tokens? I think that I make tokens. <laughs> yeah, I actually get more tokens like this. Yeah, I, I realized later. <laughs> mucho tokens. So many. So mucho tokens. Now the question is, am I going to be able to raise what my opponent's doing? <clears throat> I could have suspended search there, but I think I'd rather hard cast it in two turns. All right, what do you got, OP? Sure. <laughs> Triple red card? Sounds sounds good. Sounds good, yeah. <laughs> nice mana base, OP. My actual end goal is to get near for a band, so it'll be great if everyone can help and probably for that. <laughs> nice. That's actually very smart from my opponent. To use the Rival Master so he doesn't chomp attack. It's probably not going to matter because I'm going to make. I think I'm going to have my opponent at two turn clock. I should be able to present a two turn clock. <clears throat> Just wanted to drop in an offer, condolences, and sorry about my sleeper agent again. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Uh, these guys are attacking and this guy's attacking. So we're going to find Sanctuary. OK. So first, we're going to get in there. And I'm going to find. Oh, I should have I should, I actually missed sequenced here. It's probably not going to matter. But... We're definitely getting Celestial Sanctuary and Blast Zone. Bouncing Radiant Fountain. We should be able to present it to turn clock anyway. Gonna gain two, make sure we don't die to lightning bolt. Play this and play this. That's the turn. Who's got zombies? You got zombies? No, you don't got zombies. We got zombies. Francisco is a necessary <laughs> sacrifice. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, 
everywhere at my LG is playing Force Negation now because of my tournament at Modern Weeklies. Feels good, man. What would I ban from Neoform? Uh, probably yeah, I just Allosaurus Rider. Purge, yes. Sage, yes. Thank you. And so I probably want a couple of paths, but not too many. Gracer seems okay. Bajuki Box seems unplayable. I feel like I do want one tracker. I wouldn't consider this a grindy matchup, but I need business. Yeah, I think it might not be good enough. <laughs> On the draw path seems more like a necessity to stop an early Rebel Master. But is it better than just having ramp though? I think it's not. Yeah, I think we're just gonna do this. Just have purges and sage for moon. Neoform doesn't need ban. I'm not gonna get into that again. It does need to be banned, in my opinion. You can you you are entitled to your own opinion though. It's perfectly fine. But you cannot say that it doesn't need a ban. You might you might think that it doesn't need a ban. That's perfectly fine. But speaking. Speaking objectively, that's just not true. We're one and two right now. I guess it makes sense. We're in the one and two bracket. That's why we're playing against mono red nonsense. That's an easy one. We should need to recall every copy of my surf I am burned. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's another alternative. Oh yeah, I hope they do it quickly, so I can have I can have my format back. It just feels really bad that every couple of matches you just have an, just have a non a non match happen. I think I, I think I keep this and I'm looking for castle. Just once upon a time. It was gradient limited. God damn it, Magus. Uh thick on Steve. Yeah, second Steve. I'm going to play fetch on one though, which is going to make my hands super awkward, but I think it's important for me not to get god by a blood moon here. Okay, no moon. That's good. Basic forest. Oops, no, 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 no. I have six. I didn't want to have six. I did not want to have six. Whew, dodgy bullet there. <laughs> the card is a pool is saying you want to use the other because but then it's just a one one. <laughs> I mean that's basically what it does, right? Rabble Master. Block fetch. Now we're gonna play a massive two four here. Oh, does my opponent ever get through a 2-4? And it's a freaking 2-4. 2-4. I think I don't block the Gobos, though. If, I, if they attack with the Rebel Master... Nah, uh, 
Oh man, this is rough. Yeah, I think I trade. It slows down the clock so much. Yeah, you see, like, my opponent's clock would be a little bit too fast. Uh, forest, now we have a snow covered forest. Now, can my opponent be the Colossal Dread Modo? That is the question. Can my opponent be the Colossal Dread Modo? Legion War Boss. So I think here we block the Rabble Master. We take six down to nine. And then the, we packed for, for Sage, blow this up. And then yeah, we take it from there. We just stabilize making a billion zombies. But I, I think it's going to be very important for me to make sure that my life total remains high, as high as possible, so I cannot take this 7 here. No, I think that the attack with the rabble was, was probably correct there. Yeah, taking 7 is, is too greedy, so just packed for Sage. Sage, one, two, three. Sage there. Six mana, prime time. Fountain field. Some boss. And more Sombos. We even can... We have one planes left in the deck, so we can go squad ourselves to get two more Zombies if we somehow need to. Moon and Valak not working together feels like a flavor fail. Uh, not really. <laughs> that seems like good, good game design. If you're going to design Valakut and Blood Moon, Blood Moon stopping Valakut seems... Seems like a necessity, honestly. <laughs> right, so this guy is going to chomp attack into my Sombo. Moon certainly much worse against this deck than against Amulet. Like the fact that we have so many basics. Imagine blood just affected no mountain, non basics. Yeah, gross. Wait, what? So I guess th I guess this is just my opponent conceding the game. Seems like this is my opponent's way of like right click conceding here. Where were you guys? All right. Eidolon. 
Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So they're going to get to clear my Zombos here. And they're going to get to clear all the ones that I... Ooh, I made a mistake. Should have packed it for Dryad. I mean, honestly, like... It's kind of whatever, right? It's not like we're losing this game, right? I don't think I'm gonna use this pact, however, uh, because they might they might play in snare and bridge. So because of Ensnare and Bridge, I think I'm going to chill here. I'm going to take six. I'm going to gain two more life, make two zombies, and pass the turn. And next turn, I can valak at their face after I, after I see how they use their mana. Why no with Neoform? Sam, what the hell are you doing, man? Sure. What now? <laughs> what now, opponent? You, you have successfully thrown away your Eidolon. Now what? Hardcast Simeon Spirit Guide, okay. What, what, what the hell are we still doing? What the... Well, I was going to pack for that guy. I guess I don't have to now. My opponent seems to have a very, very strict no concession policy over there. Bounce my bounce. Yeah value. My opponent finally found the concede button and used it very effectively. Okay, can we cash this after being robbed of one of our matches? And we managed to cash this league. Shadow. Shadow was chilling on stream earlier today. All right, so rampant growth. Explore. Sneep. Probably playing against Amulet here. Tectonic Edge, Eldrassi Temple, Chalice of the Void. Turn to Thought Knot. Opponent correctly picking the The correct card there. Uh, snow covered forest. Tectonic Edge is kind of beating there. Another thought. Okay, yeah, we're, we were not winning this. <laughs> we were not winning this game. We were not going to win. Well, I guess technically, technically, 
we could still top deck exactly a prime time this coming turn. But it needs to be exactly prime time because uh, the chalice is locking out some of the specs. Well, that's a chump blocker. That is unfortunately just a chump blocker. We're gonna take two. We're gonna get to take, make them take three. So that's something. Smasher. Oh yeah. Woo All right. Yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 we're done here. We are done so. Um, we like Sage. We like Paths. Don't like this. We don't like this. We like Trackers. Don't need that. <clears throat> Yeah, turn two thought not into turn three thought not into turn four tech edge. Just gonna do it. Two card my gracer, so I'm gonna ship this too slow. This is much better. Gonna once upon first because we might find one of our um, non pain lens. Brutal. Um, this hand, I think I'd rather have a tracker here. I'm gonna be taking a lot of damage from this canopy, but that's that's fine. Chalice, sure. Giant. Turn three Tron, turn three Tron. Cast basic forest. Got punished. I was playing around the tracker that I have in hand and I got punished by drawing the best possible card. Feels bad, man. Attack and pass. Is it possible that our deck gets a man or anything other than once upon a time and feel of the dead? Uh, I doubt it. If we get banned, it's probably going to be one of those cards. They could ban like a prime time or something, but that seems like a very, very bad move. Prime time's gone. Forest. Okay, so one, two, three. I'm doing this like so because if I draw a Valakith, it's gonna be it's gonna be better for me to sequence in this way. I don't think I want to trade just yet. This tracker can give me more value. It will ban Valakid before field. Valakid was banned before. Oh, that's right. Valakid was banned at one point. That's crazy to me. I wonder if my opponent is playing one of those versions. Like, I've seen versions of Tron that are playing cards like um, I can't liberate it and shit. Another thought not. Ballista. Ugin. Okay. Eugene. Yay. Um, this is probably game, right?
Valakut, Valakut, or Valakut plus Bounce Land. Because if we Valakut plus Bounce Land, that is going to be four triggers. This is also going to be four triggers, though. Yeah, let's do Valakut plus Bounce. One, one, face, face. Always yes, always yes, always yield. Now we're going to get to draw a card. Oh, they just can see. Classic and Fate Titan. Prime time to strong. <clears throat> Falakut will abandon his time to quit magic. <laughs> It'd be like Vanny Garak, like Phoenix, not Phyllis Lunig, or Supplier, not Hogak. Yeah, uh, yeah, but no. I think I'm gonna submit the same now. Um, yeah, Hogak, Hogak was was a mistake. Mm. Interesting hand. How do we feel about this one? I think I'm going to keep it, but I'm not sold. It's possible I should have shipped this. Oh, that's a great draw. I'll take it. If Elizabeth was not banned, I think Arc like Phoenix would have kept Oko in check. It's possible, but I don't think worth trying to find out, if that makes sense. All right, Nidetron, Nidetron. Smasher. Triad. Valakut, this. Ah, Tech Edge is insane there. Oh my god, Tech Edge so good. That's such a good Tectonic Edge. Which are the best decks to go now in Modern? Uh, Amulet. Um, some kind of like Ursa control deck, I would assume. All right, so we have multiple lines here. We can path this Smasher. I can path myself to guarantee Titan mana too. That means that we go down to four. If I path the Smasher, I think I have to pass the, path the Smasher, right? Pitch in the second Dryad and take five. And I need to get a little bit lucky. But if I get lucky, I just win. Castle? Castle. Nope. Uh, Giants. Batman. Oh, I don't find the thought not please. Yeah, that's that's game. <laughs> that's game. They naturally found the basic that they needed to cast it once upon a time. That's hilarious. Uh, we can trigger Valakut here, the, however. So, Snuggle Forest, Valakut on... I think on Thought Knot, right?
What do I kill? I think I go to five and I kill the sub not here. But I have to draw to get and get lucky here. I go down to uh, not a five, but I need another draw step to try to get lucky. Nice. And it's not the best thing ever, but it is better than not doing anything. Let's try us doing stuff. Ballista for a million. <laughs> Five. All right. Prime time one time. Smart. My opponent's going to kill the Dryad over dealing damage to me. Makes sense. We're still in the same situation, though. If we find the... Bounce land, we're gonna win. Oh, I just remember that I gave them the forest. All right, so we're in a top deck war. Well, my opponent has a chalice. I'm gonna hold that in hand. They draw smasher. <laughs> God damn it! All right, so one time Titan. Slow roll. Huh! Whiff! Can't even trigger enough time field. Damn it. GG's. Alright. Feels bad. Like, I felt I felt very advantaged, and then they top deck that timely thought not. It was rough. Um, but yeah, so... I think this deck has legs for sure. I think this deck has legs for sure. Um, our losses were, well, to Neo Brand, which we just died on turn one, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, we lost to Jeskai, which felt really bad. Like, the, like the, the, the concern that I have, which is that we have a lot of ways to find basics, but then we actually don't have that many basics, actually did come up um, in that matchup specifically. And, uh, you know, the first list that um, that uh, Will had posted had a second tracker over the search for tomorrow. So maybe that is uh, one of the lines that we can take. We didn't play... Uh, the red deck that we played against was not really a deck. So, of course, like we didn't get to experience what I was... Uh, what was one of my, my initial thoughts, which is um, whether we have enough ways of, uh, you know, keeping our head above water while we get to Titan. Because even in this in this deck, like we don't have the Suva, right? And we only have two bounce lands. So it's not that we can replay Radiant Fountain every turn like we do in Amulet. Um, so... It's pretty rough. Mind Sensor is good for mirrors. Yeah, Mind Sensor is actually legit good. We didn't play against uh, any mirrors nor any amulet this league. We played against amulet twice in the previous league, but why Rampant Growth? Because it's a two mana spell that actually uh, gets us. Uh, it's it's a two mana ramp spell. That's like, the only explanation. Instead of Rampant Growth, we could be playing another copy of Explore. I could see that, uh, but I do understand like the appeal of, of having a Explore can with basically right. Uh, explore can whiff, and this can't. Uh, not necessarily, because Rampant Growth can find you a basic forest, while um, Farsi cannot. Farsi can find you Temple Garden and Plains, but it cannot, and basic Plains, uh, but it cannot find you a basic forest, and basic forest is the most important basic, so that's the reason. And note, note that it's a one-off, right? It's not like we're playing three of these. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's still room to tune a list like this for sure. Um, even going down to something like Arboreal Gracer, I don't know if we want more, I don't know if we want less. I, I literally have five matches in with this with this deck. Certainly not enough. 
but I do actually like the idea of just having access to a couple of gracers for the matchups where it's good, while uh, having access to more reliable ramp for you know all the other matchups. Um, but yeah, I don't. I think that the idea is that you can turn three Titan, but I don't think you have to turn three Titan because of the Dryad precisely. So yeah. So thoughts for the future sideboard. I kind of would like to have access to. Um, I could see something like Night of Autumn, for example, just as a one-off. This is a card that I actually kind of liked in, in previous iterations of this deck. A big fan of the Mind Sensor, big fan of the Purges. Um, probably over the third path. Uh, rest in Peace, I don't know what it really is against. I mean, we played against Dredge, obviously. Rest in Peace just won by itself. But I don't think that Dredge is the bad matchup anyway. So I don't think we care about... We need Rest in Peace in the sideboard. However, Rest in Peace has side effects against a ton of other decks that might be bad matchups. Um, I don't want to say Shadow, because I think that Shadow, deck, Shadow decks are actually reasonable matchups for this kind of this style of deck. But something like Storm, which obviously it's horrendous for us, and that kind of thing, um, you know, Rest in Peace might be pretty good there. Uh, Damping Sphere is also another consideration that we have played in the past in lists like, in lists like this. Um, Bill of Summers, it's cool. This is a legit card for sure. Um, I wonder if we're doing a little bit too much on the tracker thing. Um, against Control, I think that we are just probably going to lose anyway. Unless we have like a really, really good draw. Like we played against Control earlier today and it just I just felt helpless throughout the entirety of that match. And it's probably even worse against something like blue white that goes even even harder on the whole uh, planeswalker aspect of things so to be honest though i don't think that blue white is a bad thing to have as a bad matchup considering that not a lot of people play it how does samuel wreck control this lose to it uh well you can you actually have interaction of your own that's very relevant uh, which this does not like, if we add negates and stuff, our blue-white matchup becomes a lot better. Um, you can chain titans, which this deck cannot do. Like, you actually need to naturally draw every single one of your titans. It's the same, it's the same reason why Scapeshift has a bad control matchup, while, um, while Amulet has a good control matchup. They're very different decks. So it's not like, oh, Primeval Titan is just like, you know, every deck with Primeval Titan is going to be the same. That's just not how it works. Um, this deck is way closer to Scapeshift than it is to Amulet, and Scapeshift has a bad control matchup. So, Scapeshift actually has a good control matchup. I disagree. I, I played Scapeshift a fair amount, and I think that the control matchup is not great. Um, assuming that your control opponent has a reasonable draw. Like, a, a, a reasonable Scapeshift draw versus a reasonable blue-white draw, the blue-white draw is going to win most of the time, at least. Um... It's very different with uh, Through the Breach. If you're playing Breach Titan, then that's a different story because being able to play at instant speed is a very, very big, it's a very, very big uh, upside. Also, with Force of Negation, being able to play around Force, it, it's kind of a big deal too. But yeah, I, I Scapeshift took a serious when they printed Field of Ruin. I disagree. Like Scapeshift has been playing Field of Ruin for a while. Skip shift kind of just like embraced Field of Ruin. Uh, it was this card that enabled this kind of deck. Uh, well, I guess it was Field of it was Field of the Dead. That oh, when I played Field of Ruin, yeah, okay, I I, I confused you with I confused that with Field of, Field of the Dead. My bad. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Field of Ruin is a big deal. In before that, uh, if your if your blue white opponent wanted to destroy one of your lands, they would go like they would either need to take at you or go squatter you, which would put them behind a mana. Field of Ruin uh, makes it so they can stay even on mana. Which is a big, big difference. Um, anyway, um, did I cut something from? Oh yeah, I cut one of the trackers. What else? What else to say about this deck? It's pretty cool. I actually enjoy 
uh, this deck more than I enjoy escape shift variants. So I, I might play some more of this in the future. I would like to have access to one more basic, I think, with how heavy with how heavy basics we are. I understand like the the will to want to include include a prismatic vista. We even saw that in the against Etron right now. Where uh, you know, like having a fetch land in play that allowed us to like double trigger Valka to kill a thought knot, and then a smasher. So it certainly makes sense. But maybe I don't know. Maybe we should be playing something else here. I don't know. I know, it feels pretty... It feels pretty hard to find space for all the cars that we want to fit. There's also a possibility that there's there's a blue-green version of this deck instead of blue-white. Because again, the white is only for the sideboard cards, right? So by having access to blue, you can now, because of Toleria plus Simic, you can actually chain Titans, which you otherwise cannot. So I trigger Valkyrie here and there until they have React, and then you drop a bomb card or two and win, and they print the Field of Ruin and that whole kill opponent. Exactly. Exactly. 100%. Anyway, this, this deck is cool. Uh, and I'm probably going to be playing some more of it in the future. I'm going to try to tune and try to figure out a, a way to improve on the on the deck. But that's going to be it for now. I will. I think I will be back tomorrow. I'm not 100 sure yet, but I think I will be. Um, but yeah, I might uh, start a little bit later than I usually do because I'm like I'm playing the show one hour drive from here, and then. I am driving, like, I started the drive at 1 a.m. and then arriving here at, like, 2.15 or something. And then, yeah. <laughs> Show us Mimulet. Yeah, the, the, if you if you go on, on my YouTube, uh, you're going to find Mimulet over there. We basically, it was, like, a fun stream, and we tried to just fit as many stupid cards as we could. Somehow we 3 2 if a friendly with this deck, which is hilarious. You can see the, you can find the, the video online. So many random cards. Uh, we did have Blood Moon in the sideboard, I think. Yeah, I guess this is, I guess I, I, I changed some things afterwards. I don't even know, I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it it was really really fun. It was really really fun. This was this was built by chat because there's a bunch of cards that I didn't even know that existed, like this card, for example. I had no idea this existed. Intervention Pact was actually relevant in one of the matchups that we played with, which which was hilarious. Um, all the other Vanessas with the Healy. So Healy did, did also some cool stuff. Magus of the Candelabra actually did some really really sweet things. Um, I can't remember what it was, but I remember just like using Magus to like activate to activate a uh, stronghold and stuff multiple times in the same turn in in the late game and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. It wasn't good enough to want to play it, <laughs> but it was still cool. Sahili, yeah, I actually have Sahili Titan as well. I did stream Amulet Sah Sahili Titan. Uh, at some point. This is the list that we were playing. I could see building as a healer list. And I I played so many lists of <laughs> I've played so many amulet lists. So far my favorite that I've actually had I, I managed to 5 0 with um the reclaimer list. This list was a lot of fun. This list was a lot, lot of fun. Super, super cool interactions and stuff. Reclaimer is a legit card. I really wish there was a place for this card in Modern. 
So here you see with Titans, that's it comes to SF. Yeah, it, it's a heal enables a lot of new lines, and so does Reclaimer. Sweet, sweet deck. Anyway, enough of mumbling around. I'm gonna be again. I'm gonna try to be back tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, get in touch with me in. Uh, Twitter, Discord, and all that good stuff. And thanks for checking out the stream. If you're looking on, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like and subscribe buttons. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.